Hey, good morning. This is Dan with Puts Ponds and Gardens, and Derek and I are here in Bloomfield Hills. We're going to be looking at converting an existing pond into a pondless waterfall in this uh, nice backyard. So let's take you around back, and we'll show you what we're going to be doing. All right, so we're here in this beautiful backyard. Nice fall day. Look at this nice covered porch. Sit outside and enjoy a nice roaring fire. But over here, we've got, so over here we've got a pond that very, very shallow. It's just supposed to be a water feature. But on this side, we've got beautiful windows, door, and what we want to do is we want to bring this outdoor feature. We want to get the looks of it so they can look right outside see this water feature and enjoy it from inside so we're going to get started taking all this apart and work our magic we've just been kicking around a bunch of ideas and how we're going to uh, attack this area what i really like about this area is not only that it's right next to the house here and it's it's all it's in its own little outdoor room with this nice evergreen U hedge here with the densies, the, the subtle plantings that are around it. This is going to be a nice little quaint area. And imagine, imagine from right here sitting, you'll be able to see it from this area, twisting and turning over, outdoor couches, sitting on those, enjoying a roaring fire, and having that sound of water just waft into this outdoor living space. So stay tuned and we'll be back on this project really quick. All right, so we've got our aqua blocks here. We've got our pump vault and our spillway. Our piping is around the corner. We're getting ready to lay out our basin area because that's what we want to do first. Underneath the ground because um, she's got some restless pups that like to dig, they put down um, this paver grid a little overkill but it's underneath the area that we want to put um, our basin in so we've got to remove the this paver grid that way um, we can actually dig our basin so when we dig here we'll actually fill in the existing pond ramping up and building our waterfalls coming back down into our basin so follow along it's time to go to work so a couple things we found um, we always find something when we're digging a lot of things always hidden underground so we've got a downspout here that led right underneath the basin but it was clogged it's supposed to be coming out over here into the lawn but it wasn't it was overflowing right here at the source so that told us it was clogged we found that we excavated it out what we're going to suggest to the homeowner is just put a typical uh, downspout um, extension on it'll lead right to the edge of the, the basin so it can keep it full a lot of square footage up there on that roof and that's going to come down in several downspouts on the back of the house but it will keep this filled up um, what we're going to end up doing is well we found several layers of landscape fabric in here and that makes it harder to dig even with a machine we've gotten through that and then up at the waterfall we took that apart we found a preformed fiberglass basin that was hidden that was probably the original idea for a waterfall it's just no one ever took it out so what we're going to do is we're going to level this area out over here derek is compacting it right now and what we're going to do is because the original pond had flagstone all around it we just took and stored it way behind those shrubs way over there. Um, we're going to bring that back out. Because you won't see the retaining wall, we're going to have to add a retaining wall back here. So that way we can elevate our soils 
set our spillway box in to come forward. That's going to be the start. We could do it now, but if we do that, uh, it'll make a really tight spot in the back to be able to create a retaining wall behind our waterfalls. We don't want to do that, so we're going to uh, plan it out so we can uh, get that retaining wall in now. We'll put some fabric um, against that retaining wall, and then we'll start digging out our basin right here, loading up the, the face of that wall, so that way we can start our waterfall. So that's what we're going to do today, and we'll get this all shaped up. Want to get the uh, aqua blocks in. Tomorrow we've got a special guest visitor. So we have an up and coming wannabe pond builder from another part of Michigan. Billy is going to be observing us, maybe even helping us a little bit. We're going to show him the ropes on how we build a pondless waterfall. Part of building or becoming a certified aquascape contractor is you've got to have so many um, projects in the ground. And with collaborating with existing experienced pond builders like ourselves, that helps him to hone his craft, be able to get more projects in the ground. We can give him some tips and tricks on how to become a certified aquascape contractor, but he's got to get some in the ground so that way he's on his, on his way to becoming a certified aquascape contractor. And that way he can collaborate with other uh, CAC certified aquascape contractors in his area or throughout the, throughout the world actually. We've got them as far as Russia now. We want to uh, we want to mentor him. We want to show him the right way to do it because uh, ponds done right, customer serves right. That's the Oxgate motto, and we live by it. So let's get some more work done. Here we go. Alright, so what we're going to do here, you can see we've got our aqua blocks here, but what we don't like as a company you know, is the waterfall to come down, hit the last drop right here, and then go into a, just a basin full of gravel. Even if it's decorative gravel, it's still gravel. So what we do is, this is called a bib liner here. We want the water to go over the bib liner and then carry on here so we still have water in motion right here and then it can disappear here where there's a little bit of gravel but it'll still flow through the gravel itself so when it does that it appears that it's uh you know we still have water in motion so what i'm going to do is i'm going to clean all this up i'm going to put a piece of uh, cover tape over this so we'll ensure that we get a hundred percent of the water coming over the top of this bib liner right here and that's it We're back in Bloomfield Hills. We've got all our materials set up. We have actually started to uh, rock in the waterfall. We've got a special guest visitor here today. We've got an up and coming CAC certified aquascape contractor. Uh, we've got Billy from Triton Waterscapes. He's out of Traverse City, Michigan. And I'm gonna turn the camera around and let Billy tell you what he's all about. Hi there, Traverse City, uh, Michigan, Triton Waterscapes. And uh, just down here helping out Dan today, getting to learn a lot about uh, what he does here and uh, he's been a wealth of information so far and looking forward to creating great waterscapes and uh, ponds in the future up in the Traverse City area. Pretty exciting. Cool, so check out that link below. I'm gonna put a link to, uh, to Billy's um, YouTube channel. I want you to seriously check out his stuff. Um, he's gonna have some really cool, interesting um, 
waterscapes that he's going to be creating throughout the years. So do him a solid and why don't you um, subscribe to his channel as well. I'll put a link to his Facebook page and um, you can check out his work there too. I talked a little bit before about putting a downspout on here. We took the initial or the existing four inch drain tile, we hugged it close and it's going to go right down into our basin. So anytime it rains, anytime snow melts, we'll get an influx of water coming into the system itself. The other part, it continued all the way here behind those bushes. What's going to happen? You're going to say, okay, this thing's going to need to be drained because it's going to have too much water in it. You're right. It's going to have too much water in it eventually. So if water goes up and over the liner, we've got the other half of that drain tile that leads out this way. Or a homeowner can come on the back side over here. We're going to have our drain valve for the springtime right between these bushes. Open up that drain valve. You can drain some out here into the lawn if it ever becomes too much water in your basin. Simple, simple. We're homeowners too. We have pondless waterfalls at home and we try to make it as easy as possible for our customers to be able to maintain their own features all by themselves. All right, so we're done with this project here in Bloomfield Hills. We did a pondless waterfall conversion. We originally had a pond, but we converted it into a pondless waterfall. So I'm gonna turn the camera around. You know what, first, um, I'm gonna point the camera over at Billy because this is Billy's first pondless waterfall that he's assisted on. I want to get his input on it and see what he thinks. <laughs> this is your first pondless waterfall, what do you think? Uh, I think it's fantastic. Uh, Dan does incredible work. Uh, everything I've seen him do uh, up to this point has been fantastic and this does not disappoint. This is the first time I had the uh, opportunity to work directly with Dan and, and this project. It was, uh, it was outstanding. The, the water um, sounds that you get from just each of the falls coming through even the homeowner came out and was just uh, really excited uh, about it so if you're not following Dave uh, Dan right now click the like button subscribe click the bell make sure you get on his list for when he opens up these uh, videos so you can see what he's got and uh, in the future if you're up in the northern Michigan area I'm your guy I'll, I'll hook you up Triton Waterscapes Bam. thanks Dave Dan. some people call me Dave some people have called me worse um, <laughs> You know, it was a team effort. He mentioned me a lot, but you know what? Um, it's it's a team. Derek and I really got to work hand in hand together. Uh, Derek and uh, Brian typically do um, most of the construction work. You know, I do have to give kudos to those guys because um, you know they are um, they're the artists. They did learn from somebody, though. Um, you can guess who. But let me turn the camera around. Let me show you um, the end result. All right, so here's the pondless waterfall. Yes, it's it's a little dirty right now, so it's a chocolate river. I really wanted to do mulch surrounding the area. But if you remember from the beginning, she had all gravel. You can probably hear in the background the dogs barking. The dogs love to dig. She does not want them to go into the... If I mulched it, the mulch is going to turn into dirt and they're gonna drag that dirt back into the house. Dragging it back in the house, just it's more work for a homeowner. So we went with the Beechwood Pebbles. It's a brown color, and it's a little lighter weight than a typical um, cobblestone, but I think it offsets the cobblestone, gives it a little, you know, natural look instead of doing just a straight cracked cobblestone. So we put our stepping stones back in, along here so she can access her hose. What I really like is that statue in the middle. It's kind of breaking up the falls. And I love how right at the base of her, let me go over here, how the water is just kind of going over her legs just a little bit. We got simplistic waterfalls right here. Maybe a little bit more of a rapid here. A lot of sound coming off of this one up on top. About 130 gallons down below for reserves. We've got a downspout right here that is supplying this when it rains. In fact, when we showed up this morning, uh, the basin was already full. We didn't even add any water to it. Let me show you, let's get Derek over here. 
Derek can open up the discharge valve. So we've got a valve box. There it is. So we've got an inline valve. Derek can open that up. It's going to come out right here. Boom! <laughs> so in the springtime, discharge the water out, rinse down the streams, all good to go. We do that on almost every job that we can because it makes the life, it, it makes the homeowner's job a lot easier. You don't have to access the pump. Again, that pump can stay down there all winter. She plans on running this as long as she can this winter. Um, there's no reason why she wouldn't be able to. We've got 3,000 gallons of water flowing over this. So anything under 2,000, you're fighting it. Uh, you, got, you run the risk of not being able to run it during the winter time. It'll freeze up. We will get ice formations up and through here, down in here and on the drops. But we want to be able to enjoy a nice blanket of snow. We want to give the birds a place to drink in the winter time. And from this window, her view, outstanding. Let us know in the comments below what you think of this project. Leave us a comment. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. Hit the bell. That way you get alerted. Every Saturday morning, 8 o'clock, we have a new video coming out. Thanks for watching. Make it a great day. Bye. My goodness, this is absolutely gorgeous. Look at her. That is beautiful. What an improvement. Oh, I love it. We done good? Yo, I am so happy. It is gorgeous. I love how the, the water is going right over her leg. Oh, it's, just a little bit. It's astounding. It's just absolutely gorgeous. A lot more sound than it was before. It is. It's got a lot more sound and it has different tones, which I like. It's much more natural sounding. Now I feel like I'm kayaking on the Osabo. <laughs> and awesome. it's a lot less maintenance for you. And it's less maintenance. You don't have to pull the pump out in the wintertime. Oh, yeah.